Hello and welcome or welcome back to Cast On, a knitting podcast where I talk about my finished objects, my whips, some yarn acquisitions and some more knitting things. My name is Ellie, I'm from Austria and this is episode number 38. Hello, hello, I hope you're all doing well. Happy New Year! I know it is uh, kind of late already, <laughs> but I still wish you a Happy New Year since this is the first podcast episode of 2024 and I'm super, super excited uh, for all the things that are going to come this year. I hope you all had a lovely Christmas and a really nice uh, start in the new year. For me it's just been a blur to be honest but I'm going to talk a little bit about that later on in the video because this is a knitting podcast primarily. So let's talk about my finished objects and I have to say I have a lot of finished objects because it's been a few weeks uh, since the last podcast episode. <laughs> So let's get started. So let's get started with the first few things. I finished my brother's sock. I started them in the last episode. I don't have them anymore and I forgot to take pictures, but they are really not that special. They're just plain manila socks uh, made with some West Yorkshire spinners yarn with a contrast heel, toe and leg. And I actually managed to finish them. It was so so close. I literally finished them on the day uh, when I was gonna give them to him in the morning. So it was a wild ride I have to say. I really should have started earlier or left them not so close because I always thought oh I'm gonna they're gonna they are so fast I'm gonna finish them in like a day or something. Yeah that didn't happen. Uh, so yeah, but I finished them and my mum and my brother were super happy. If you don't know the story, uh, I bought some West Yorkshire Spinners yarn in the colour Robin, but I bought too much of it, so I thought I could make my uh, family some matching Christmas socks. So I did that for my mum and my brother with contrasting uh, heels, toes and legs, and I was going to make my own pair as well. But because of the time, and I'm really kind of sick of knitting socks at the moment, I have not cast on any uh, new socks or the socks that will kind of finish uh, the set. So that is the story about the socks. I finished those and since then I primarily, primarily um, focused on finishing the big things. So what I'm wearing is my Aoife cardigan by Petite Knit. I finally finished it. I am really happy with how it came out. I knit this in Drops Charisma in this beige colour. I can't remember the colour name or colour code. But it is done. I'm going to insert some pictures because I don't want to get up right now. Um, I'm really happy with the piece i'm glad that i have a cardigan in my wardrobe another one and i'm really happy with the color i uploaded a video last week about all of the things that i um, made in 2023 so you can go and check that out because this cardigan is in that video as well because i finished it on the 31st of december so it still counts as the old year I used some petite knit uh, buttons. These are her buttons specifically for the Eva cardigan and I think they work really well. I just used some of the yarn that I had left over from the cardigan itself to attach the buttons. I'm not too bothered about how they look. I think they look fine with this really thick yarn <coughs> coming through. I can always change it but for now for me it's good enough and I have a cardigan that I can wear that is comfortable and that is also versatile. The pattern was really clear and I did not have any troubles apart from the buttons. So in the pattern she tells you that um, you basically put the first button 
at a certain amount of rows and then the last button or the um, closest button to your neck to the last increase of the panel and then you kind of space out the other two buttons in between that but because it didn't give me a, a nice number I would have had some gaps in between I just think that is a little bit poor because I want the buttons to be spaced out evenly and I'm not sure if you can tell but they're still not 100% even uh, like the spaces in between I think there are less between this one and that one or something like that or this and that one that is a little bit of a poor execution uh, in my opinion because if you have to think about where you're going to put put the buttons and it doesn't add up to a nice like round number it kind of is essential for a cardigan like that makes the cardigan a cardigan in my opinion so i wish that uh, she gave you a bit more of exact numbers on where to put them the buttons the button holes were really easy to make the first time i made button holes this is also the first time that i made a cardigan with um button holes like that and with such a thick what's that called button band i guess but in general it turned out really well another thing that i wish i did differently though is it is really deep i know it's supposed to be it's supposed to be a very oversized cardigan and it's supposed to have a lot of ease and it does i made the smallest size i just remember that i made the smallest size and you have the ease between I think 10 and 20 centimeters or something really drastically but I wish I stopped earlier because my armpit is here and the uh, yoke finishes down here so what happens is that even though it's comfortable wearing it like this when I pull it up my waist is exposed and it's cold so I wish I just stopped a little bit earlier but apart from that I think it's really uh, nice you have this gorgeous uh, shoulder detail here which kind of makes the cardigan really interesting the first time I made uh, a construction like this and it was really nice to do very happy with the cardigan I know I need another one I need a tighter fitting cardigan like the April cardigan but I think for now I have enough uh, about purling and yeah i just want to knit i don't want to pearl so many pearl rows so that is the first uh or should i say second to third ish finished object um let's have a sip of tea today i have my really cute fox mug and then drinking a fruit tea here we go Another big thing that I finished is my Tuku by the Petite Knitter. Now this sweater is very, very wet. I blocked it a few days ago, but apparently I did not squeeze out enough water and I underestimated how quickly it would dry. So it's still very, very wet. And I've not tried it on yet either, so I don't even know how the fit is. But this is what it looks like. Isn't it just gorgeous? You have this really gorgeous yoke and then a shorter body and just normal length sleeves with a nice high neck one by one ribbing. This is uh, made with woolly knit yarn on the cones for ply in the colour cinnamon brown and the white cream white whatever they're gonna call it color and i think it turned out so so well i love this yarn i love working with it i have another jumper in this yarn and it's still one of my favorites it bloomed really nicely it filled out all of the gaps of course i held this yarn double because it is a four ply so to get dk weight um you will need to have it double for the correct gauge and 
I am really happy with it. Like I said, I don't know about the fit yet. I tried it on before I blocked it and I wanted a little bit more length in the body. But the yoke is rather deep. And I found out why. And this is such a silly mistake and I am kind of kicking myself <laughs> because I used the wrong needle size. I thought because it's a DK weight you need four millimeter needles and that's what I use but you actually need three and a half so this whole sweater turned out bigger than what it's supposed to be I also made the did I make the smallest size or size 2? I can't remember you have to check out my Ravelry page for that uh, I always have the sizes on there but that's why the yoke is deeper than I expected oh and why it's also wider in general just a silly mistake on my part i know i should have paid more attention to it i don't know why i did it um but it is the way it is now and i think it turned out really nicely nevertheless in terms of the color work itself i really like this last color chart it pops and that is a good thing but it really stands out from the whole piece because I pulled too tightly on this first chart so the white kind of disappeared into the brown and then down here I um, paid more attention to how much I pulled the white yarn and it pops out a lot more and it is a lot neater. I hope that with blocking you would uh, see the white a little bit more but I mean if you pull the yarn too tightly once uh, with your floats you can't like blocking is not going to fix that so yeah that is a little bit disappointing uh, as well but I think in general it looks really good and I am happy that I finally um, made this garment that I've had on my list for such a long time and that just looked visually so good and I now have it in my wardrobe like I said I need to check about uh, the fit length as well because the yoke is deeper so I generally have my uh, sweaters hip length and with the yoke so deep I always fear that just like with this cardigan that when I lift up my arms my whole tummy and um, waist is going to be exposed which is not great because I am a very cold person <laughs> but we'll have to see we'll have to see uh, I still have lots of this yarn left, uh, especially the brown because it came on a cone and I think out of one cone I can get at least two sweaters uh, and because this is colour work, again, just like my other sweater, I have more of the brown because I used some white in it. So I don't know what I'm going to do with the rest, it's just going to be in my stash for now and we'll see what I can make. And last but not least, I have my Sophie scarf finished. This is another petite knit pattern. This is my very first Sophie scarf that I ever made. I was not a huge fan of it when it came out, but I still wanted to try it because I heard so many people um, talk about it and I felt like, especially in winter, it would be nice to have something smaller around my neck when I go out instead of a huge shawl. So this is what it looks like, I fold it in half. This one is dry, <laughs> so that's good, because I blocked them at the same time. The yarn is Mayo Merino, Fine Merino, and the colour is called Wheat. I bought this when I was in England, and I think it looks really nice. I opted for the longer Sophie scarf version, she has two lengths in the pattern itself and I opted for the longer one. I do still want to make a Sophie shawl as well with the other yarn that I have uh, but for now I think it's uh, nice to have this. Oh that looks cute! That's very nice! 
yeah i'm really happy with the length that i opted for the for the longer one because i was worried that the ties would just be like this small and i didn't want that uh, but i think it looks really good it's not too close to my skin color and i also wanted something neutral once again something that i can um wear with all of my other colors that i have in my wardrobe kind of thing and i think it looks good yeah really happy with that i have to say the pattern itself um it is well written it's not a long pattern i mean it's also a very easy project and i did not find it as relaxing to knit on as i thought it would be i know people said that it is difficult to keep track of uh the increases or the decreases and then you kind of yeah it just gets jumbled up i try to combat that with using two stitch markers so one for the earliest um or the last let's say increase and then the increase before so i can always see how many rows i have in between and then just count uh, on the i cord because it is in garter stitch and i think in garter stitch it's really difficult to count rows at least in my opinion uh, so that's what I did and that helped but I still prefer to have the pattern open uh, on the side and then I just crossed off row one to whatever um, before you have the next increase or decrease. So it did take a little bit longer than uh, I wanted it to but hey ho I finished it, I have it and I'm actually really happy with it. I don't think there's much else uh, to say about this piece. I, like I said, I want to make the Sophie shawl and I think I will make something like this for my mom because I think she could really use uh, that as well because she likes to wear a lot of like scarves around her neck, uh, especially in winter or when she gets sick. I still have a little bit left of the yarn. I specifically bought this yarn for the Sophie scarf. So this is all I have left. You get. 175 meters in it and i think you only need like 100 and i don't know 20 or something like that i can't remember what the pattern said and this is just going into my stash and i have no idea what i'm gonna make with it so i have a lot of scraps uh, in my stash oh, i'm adding even more uh, every day which is I don't know i'm not a huge scrappy project person i like to have my projects uniform and in one color mostly or like hand dyed yarn like this um so i'm really not great with scraps because i never know what to do with it and yeah right let's get into whips because i finished so many things i have not had time to cast on a lot of things either but i do have two new new whips well that was hard the first one i am really happy about the first one is the colette sweater by sari nordland and this is what i have so far oh it looks so good i'm so happy with how this is turning out I am making size one, two, should have looked that up before and something like that, I just can't remember it uh, on the top of my head and I just joined in the round. I started this a few days ago and this has been really enjoyable uh, to work on especially the working flat because all of those pearl rows that you have in between are just knit rows as well so there's not a lot of purling uh, going on but now that I joined in around the purling is getting more but I think with such a nice pattern I can I can live with that it looks so good i'm so happy with it i think the next thing that i want to do is put on the collar so it can really tie the piece together and then i can really see uh what it looks like as a whole but so far i'm really really happy with it i don't have the sweater pattern but i compared it to the t-shirt version which is the pattern that i have and it's 
pretty much the same it's the same gauge it's just the length is different and the sleeves are different because obviously you have long sleeves with the um, sweater pattern and short sleeves for the t-shirt so I'm just using the t-shirt one and it looks yeah it just looks really good and it works out fine uh, until now the yarn that I'm using is yarn that I've never tried before this is Bichet Bouche Le Petit uh, Lamb's Wool I bought this uh, from England because I can't find it anywhere here in Austria. This is the color grey beige and it is a fingering weight yarn. So I'm holding it with the um, mohair. I don't think I have the label of the mohair here right now. But it's the same color uh, so I don't have any like marling or anything. Same color for the mohair and the mohair is really soft so far. I'm a bit weird when it comes to mohair, I have to say. I know I like Fiocola Natalia and this is very nice as well. I'm gonna have to see how it is once I'm wearing it because I'm really sensitive around my neck and I guess my arms as well. Uh, so itchy mohair is an absolute no-go for me. And I'm very scared when I buy mohair or when I try different mohair um, that it's going to be very itchy and I just wasted my money. But luckily that is not the case with this one. So far so good. I'm excited to see how it's going to block out because of the cables and uh, the pearl rows in between. It looks really small right now but of course it will stretch uh, out. It is a drop shoulder pattern as you can tell and I'm just gonna keep keep going with it. The cables do take a long time I have to say. Uh, all of the twists they are not as fun as I, I imagined them to be because you just have so many all around the body but the look is just incredible. So yesterday I just joined in the round and here we go and this is going to be a longer project i assume i don't think i will be able to pump this out in a few weeks uh, because of the cables so that is the first whip that i have and the second one is also ca a cable project because i just really craved cables i wanted something cabley uh, on my needles and this one was the first one that I uh, cast on out of those two. But then I got stuck. Uh, more to that in a second. This is the Dawny Sweater by Rebecca Klo, the Korea Beer. Let's get this right. This is what it looks like. This is what I have so far. This is the back and this is the front. Also, just like with the other sweater, I'm going to have to put on uh, the collar pretty soon so I can actually look half decent because <laughs> right now it's just a floppy circle with some cables but the cables look really really good I'm using 4.5 millimeter needles and I'm making the size 3 the yarn is uh, World of Wool Marble. It is a merino, 80% merino, 20% silk uh, yarn in a DK weight in the colour Sandalwood. I've had this yarn in my stash uh, for over a year now. I bought it when I was in England, uh, not when I was in London in November, but the year before. Because I actually went to the, I think it was the mill, and I'm pairing it with Fiocolana Tilia, my favourite mohair so far. This is 70% kid mohair, 30% silk, in the colour 363. I believe it's called caramel. I could be wrong on that though. And these two make a really, really nice uh, pair. It's a very nice fabric, it has a gorgeous halo and the colour match is almost perfect. Like you of course can see the mohair strands uh, going through but in terms of colour there is absolutely no difference. Which is really good. 
it's because it's exactly what I wanted. Now I mentioned that I had some troubles uh, with the pattern and I have to say I'm a little bit disappointed. I started size 3 and you knit flat before you join in the round and that is where the trouble started. With size 3 you have an error in the pattern and it's a pretty big error in my opinion. I could not figure it out and I was racking my brains trying to find the mistake and where I went wrong because everyone else seemed to be fine that also made the size 3. Until I messaged uh, another knitter on Instagram because she also made the size 3 and I asked her how did you join in the round because I cannot figure it out it just does not match up and she was like yes there is a pattern in the mistake I had to unravel what I did uh, the few rows before and then lather up again to make it fit the repeat so that took a while that took about two weeks uh, or so of not knitting on it which is a shame because i really wanted to enjoy this pattern from the get-go but this has left a little bit of a foul taste in my mouth because i did message rebecca and i asked her if um there is a mistake in the pattern but I just didn't get a reply back and the other knitter that helped me solve the issue she also said she messaged her once before and she's just never gotten a reply back which is a shame because obviously I really like her patterns and I want her patterns to be the best they can be but with such a really substantial mistake um, it has to be fixed so at least it has to be mentioned somewhere so i'm going to put this on my ravelry page as well if you are wanting to make the dawny sweater in the size three bear in mind there is a mistake when you join in the round and um you have to fix that yourself other than that i am enjoying it very much so uh the cables are nice to make i mean they're cables so there's a lot of twisting and turning the stitches but I always feel like with cables once you have the first row set up properly the first twist you see which way the cables turn so you don't really need to work off the chart which is amazing news uh, in my opinion because it makes it a lot quicker and a lot more intuitive instead of having to have the pattern open on the side so let's see how far we get with this um there will be another mistake with splitting the sleeves for my size so i was made aware of that beforehand now so i know what i have to look out for and i hope that it will be smooth sailing from now on both of these projects live in my project bag and i do want to have another project that is not cables even though i really enjoy making the cables right now i was thinking of starting the sophie shawl something small um but then again i'm a sweater knitter so <laughs> it might also just be another sweater we'll see but i've been really enjoying both of these projects and that's also why i didn't cast on another thing because i wanted to focus on these because like i just said they make me so happy at the moment that I don't want to spoil it and I want to keep feeding off this happiness because I know it will not always be the case <laughs> for me to be loving working on these two projects with their cable patterns. So those are my two one and only whips. I have some yarn acquisitions but I have to say I did not buy... I only bought one of the yarn because Christmas came around so I got some Christmassy yarny things that I have to show you. So let's start with the yarn that I actually bought myself. I was in my hometown and there is this lovely yarn shop in the city center, uh, Maschenwerkstatt it's called and they have Ferner Wolle. So I popped by and I got myself some of this yarn. This is a Ferner Wolle Merino 160. 
So this is what it looks like. It's a really nice dark grey colour. This is colour 404. And this is a... What is that? Maybe a sport weight. I'm really bad with these things. I don't know the yarn weight with uh, the meterage you get. In this 50 gram ball you get 160 meters and you use a needle size three to three and a half. So that's either fingering or sport weight, probably more so towards fingering weight. And I want to make some penny gloves with this. I bought two balls and I know there will be enough, um, I just haven't started them because again it's a small circumference and I am sick of making socks at the moment and penny gloves are also just small circumferences in the round and you need two. So I don't know if I'll actually make them anytime soon. I was gonna gift them, this was supposed to be a present but Obviously that has never happened. I just bought the yarn and then was too occupied with trying to finish the sock for my brother. But this is the first yarn that I bought. One of my favorite uh, wool companies uh, in Austria. I mean, I've not really tried that many, so. <laughs> but I really liked uh, the lamb's wool. I know I talk about it every time in my Kara sweater. So I know this wool is really, really nice. And then I have some uh, wool that was gifted to me from my brother and his girlfriend. <coughs> Let's see if I can hold all of this up. This is all of the yarn that I got. Let's start with the sock yarns. So this is Arpaca uh, sock yarn in the colour Lavender Honey. And this is from the company Capo Contour. I believe that they are Swiss. I can't remember. I looked it up, um, but I obviously forgot about it because it's been a few weeks. This is 30% alpaca, 50% superwash wool and 20% polyamide. You get 200 meters and it is a uh, sock wool. Really nice colors, very nature-like and yeah, socks. Not sure when I'm gonna uh, use that. Then I have another sock yarn, and this is the colour Rose Coral. This is so, so pretty. It's pink. I'm not a massive pink fan, but for some reason, this really speaks to me. This is just really, really lovely. This will be my own pair of socks. Maybe I will gift these, I don't know, uh, but I want to keep this for myself. <clears throat> the yarn composition... Oh, the yarn content is the same, 30% alpaca, 50% superwash, 20% polyamide, and you get 200 meters. They're both really soft, they're not as like super washy feeling like most sock yarns, uh, I assume because of the alpaca, and I'm going to be, it's going to be very interesting to see how these hold up with the alpaca in it. I know it's only a small percentage, it's, it, it is only 30%, uh, but I'm gonna see how these wear. And then we have two chunkier boys. The first one is a, I think it's an iron weight. It's 17, um, what's the word? 17 stitches, that's the word. 17 stitches per 10 centimeters. And you get 50 meters in one so you don't have a lot uh, in it this is the color middle grau which is like middle gray if you translate it and i was thinking i could make a hat with it because i have the same yarn in this gorgeous petroleum color 
This is Kula 19 uh, Petroleum Blue and I think these two go really well together. This is a 100% baby alpaca so it's really really soft. So I could either make a hot water bottle cover, I think I would have enough for that or something else that is kind of small. I think if I use these two together with or like for colour work I get more out of it because it is the same yarn weight but at the same time there is so little there that I am hesitant to start making something with it uh, in case I run out. So if you have any suggestions what I could make with these two please let me know. I love this blue. It is very very vibrant and gorgeous. And then the last one that I got is a DK weight in the color orange. It is again 100% a baby alpaca. It is a very very bright orange. I'm not a huge orange fan because my skin tone is very cool. So orange most of the times doesn't really fit me. So I'm not sure what I'm going to make with this. You get 100 meters in it and it is 20 stitches per 10 centimeters. So it is a DK weight. I don't know what you're going to make with 100 meters. Maybe another Sophie shawl. But will that actually fit me, this really bright orange? I don't know, I have to think about what I'm going to make with this. I am really impressed with the yarn. It is so, so nice. The alpaca is not scratchy at all. So I was thinking about buying some more yarn from this company. Uh, so I can use the yarn to its fullest extent and actually make something that... <clears throat> I want to have not only just lying around but also like to wear so I'm very impressed that my brother thought of something like this <laughs> it was probably his girlfriend but I think they were at this alpaca farm um, and that's why he got the yarn for me but I'm very very happy with it and I can't complain too much about it I mean, I can't complain at all. It's very, it's a very thoughtful gift uh, of both of them. And then another thing that I got, this is not yarn related, I got this from my mum, is a sock ruler. I'm not sure if a lot of people know about this or if this is just like a German thing. We have these things to measure socks. This is from uh, Laniato. This is a shop here in Vienna. It's called The Wool Cafe. They uh, recently moved. But you can go there and check out the shop if you're in Vienna. Uh, they have some really cool yarn. And what this is, is you have a gauge for your needles. And you have the different sizes in centimeters. So it tells you that, for example, for a size 38-39, you have to knit you have to knit until here from down here so you like push this into the sock by the heel and then you knit until you have reached uh, that point that you want i've wanted this for a while and now i have it so i'm really happy with it i don't know how often i will actually use this because i'm sick of socks and my sock mojo basically only comes around when it's christmas time but it's good to have in my little knitting collection i guess so those were all of the christmas gifts that i got that are knitting related i hope you had a lovely christmas and i hope you also got some yarn goodies or some knitting uh, related things and yeah about my christmas my christmas was very very nice i was with my family i went to my hometown and my uncle came from Switzerland because he lives abroad and we were at my grandparents, we had our usual uh, Schweinsbraten which is just um, cooked meat I guess uh, in the oven and yeah it, we just had a really nice uh, day there, we had lots of funny stories, lots of laughter 
and lots and lots of food, especially uh, biscuits. So that was really nice. And then in the evening, we usually have our own little Christmas celebration. So me, my mom and my brother and his girlfriend this time. And we have our own Christmas tree, a big one, which we decorated the day before. And we have real candles on the tree, which we light and then generally you sing a little bit uh, but because we did all the singing at my grandparents already we said that is enough singing for this Christmas and then we just opened our presents uh, that we gifted each other and had just a really really nice evening in general and then the day between Christmas and New Year as always they just fly by and this year was uh, no exception <laughs> so I didn't really do a lot and because Christmas was on a Sunday I uh, came back to Vienna on Monday or Tuesday which was a good call and then for the new year I was just at home really relaxed had some fantastic food watched some films and I'm not a huge party person, I don't really like going out, especially uh, in huge crowds. So I just thought, I'm just going to relax and I went to bed half past uh, midnight. So <laughs> I think I'm one of the early ones. Uh, so I channeled my inner grandma, I guess, and went to bed early. But yeah, just had a really nice time. Hope uh, that next year, or should I say this year, is going to be really nice as well with my grandparents because they are quite old now. So every Christmas that we have together, every birthday is another uh, nice gift, I guess. And since then, I've just been taking it easy. I've been working. <clears throat> uh, we had a seminar weekend um, last weekend which was really fun um, a lot of offices that we have come together and then we have seminars basically the whole Saturday and Sunday and then in the evening uh, we all have a big meal together and yeah just talked to lots of people I met so many new people I had a lot of fun and I it was all just very educating I guess as well so that was a nice um, thing as always we have those uh, seminars every three months to just yeah get better in life get better with work and just meet new people get lots of tips and tricks and have a good time together i guess so i hope you had a nice christmas new year's and a time until now as well stay tuned for lots and lots of exciting videos i already have some uh, fun ones planned check out last week's video like i mentioned before where i show you all of the things and it's in 2023 like this video and subscribe to my channel if you want to see more of me and my chaotic knitting world and i'm gonna see you next time happy knitting bye